Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing something a little dangerous. Uh, we're going to be flying an instrument approach with a helicopter. Now when it comes to IFR operations with helicopters, uh, in the United States at least, uh, there's some very, very, very strict policies and really, really tight rules, especially on an equipment side of things that are required for us to actually use in order to safely operate a specific approach. Uh, one thing, for example, you're going to require specific types of stability augmentation systems, and they're actually very, very, very particular as far as, you know, this is the maximum roll rate, this is the maximum yaw rate. There's a lot of pieces to it that are required in order to make it happen. Uh, the other aspect to uh, making instrument approaches with a helicopter or flying IFR for a helicopter for that matter, is being aware of the fact that some helicopters um, have to be operated by two passengers, or that would be nice, uh, two different pilots because of the fact they're so complicated and there are so many places where you can potentially cause a lot of problems during an approach. Uh, for our approach today, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be flying it First of all, by hand, uh, we're not going to be using an automatic pilot to help us out here. And the second thing is, we're not going to be flying with two pilots. It's just going to be myself at the controls here, which is going to make things uh, very tricky. Now, the good news is our handy-dandy Bell 407 here actually has really good capabilities when it comes to being nice and stable. Uh, that's a combination of the built-in stability system on this helicopter, as well as, you know, the Microsoft Flight Simulator patented uh, automatic control system, aka, you know, the levels and curves and everything that go into uh, making this helicopter to kind of do what it is. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be flying the RNAV GPS for two into Hartford here. And uh, this is a pretty good approach because it really demonstrates all the different challenging components to it. Now, I know it's real tempting to, of course, uh, fly an ILS approach. An ILS approach, it's pretty straightforward in a helicopter. But an RNAV it tends to be a little bit chunkier. Um, uh, by chunkier, what I really mean is it's kind of the way that the altitude levels itself out kind of as you're on your journey here. Now, uh, one thing I find interesting, and I've said this a million times before, is the ball in the cockpit does not line up with the ball on the other part of the cockpit, which does not line up with the ball in the flight, the uh, little external instruments that I'm using to help me out a little bit here today. Now, one of the reasons I'm using external instruments is this makes it just a little bit easier for me on account of the fact that um, I have a little more time to react and it's a little easier to see than trying to see this little tiny circle, which I kid you not, it's probably about, I don't know, an inch on my actual monitor here. So I do have that little advantage for me. So let's go ahead and take a look at the approach itself. Um, I'm now flitching to using my left hand to fly a helicopter. Oh, that's uh, never uh, suggested. But uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at what we got against ourselves here. So, of course, I really wish there was an autopilot in this helicopter. It would make it a lot safer, but we're going to go with it. So we're going to be hitting We Got at 2,500 at or above. We're going to come down to Lomas at 2,200 at or above. We're going to come down to Dan's at 680 feet. Our gear, uh, which is going to be the last part here, we're going to be doing LNAV, uh, lateral nav, MDA, and minimum decision altitude is going to be 460 feet here. Unfortunately for us, we do not have a radar altimeter that I can find. Uh, so if we did, of course, we could dial this in directly and uh, get our handy dandy 443 here. But the one mile visibility is pretty good. Uh, we'll be able to make that one mile visibility without too much trouble here. So let's go ahead and uh, hide that again uh, so you can concentrate on uh, flying again. I'm left hand flying a helicopter here. This is not my specialty. <laughs> All right, let's get a little bit of altitude. Head into the soup. All right, there's a lot of things with flying helicopter that could go terribly wrong for us. Uh, for one, of course, I noticed as I was showing you that little plate, we have, of course, not only not gained the critical altitude that we require, we've, of course, gone uh, massively off track here. Uh, one thing that we do have going for us in the helicopter that we don't have in a conventional airplane is the fact we could potentially stop. Um, you wouldn't want to do that. I've never heard of a helicopter approved approach where you can just stop the helicopter if uh, things don't look right and then uh, descend down to your correct altitude, for example. Um, I would find that to be a little on the absurd side. I assume it might be possible in some sense, but um, like I said, a little crazy. Uh, the other problem, hey, the drag strip. Um, fun story about the drag ship, by the way, as I'm uh, getting deeper and deeper into these clouds here, is I was here once on emergency training flights, and the flight instructor said, oh, you've lost your engine. I turned my head and I saw this. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. And I was probably about, I don't know, 50 feet off the ground, pretty much ready to land on it by the time I was like, yeah, I think this maneuver is complete, kind of a thing like that. So how appropriate to uh, run into that again. I don't know, it's kind of fun. All right, so now we're going to be taking our turn here. We're still climbing up here. Well, we've got a little bit of ways to go. There's our 2,500 feet right there. Go bring our nose down, and this is where the disorientation will start. As I mentioned, uh, flying a helicopter is a bit of a handful here. So I am going to go ahead and I'll leave my power where it is. It's going to be a little bit of work to kind of get ourselves settled. Remember, in a helicopter, unlike an airplane, uh, when our nose is down, that doesn't mean we're going down. That just means we're picking up speed. Uh, we can be going down, but again, that requires a little bit of discipline on our point. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a gentle turn and get ourselves all lined back up here. 
and we're heading towards our first point. Remember, we have to get down to 2,200 feet for Lomas here. Uh, fortunately, it's not too tricky of a uh, descent here. Now, a lot of people are going to say, of course, um, what should we be doing? Oh, should we be descending with the airspeed? Should we be using the collective? The key thing is, you know, this is true of any of these style approaches. And again, you can see I'm flying all over the place because I'm not concentrating on flying the helicopter. I'm trying to explain things. The key to all of it is whatever you choose to do, keep it simple. So uh, right now we need to, we're getting pretty close to that we got, and I'm looking down, we got about five minutes and 37 seconds to go. We need to lose 300 feet in five minutes. Uh, 300 feet, uh, that's not gonna be the biggest challenge for us to lose here. So I'm actually gonna kind of hang on to the feet I have. Gotta get a little higher. Uh, remember whenever you're doing a Schmidt approaches, it's plus or minus 75 feet. So I gotta get myself back into the tolerance here and I gotta go slow down. Now, unfortunately, as you probably observe, I have not touched the HSI or adjusted its position at any point during this. So unfortunately for me, the lateral instrument I'm employing right now is actually the global positioning display down there on my bottom left, which makes this very, very challenging. So the key thing here is just let it go. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to chase it. Don't be running after any one instrument. Uh, for us in helicopter and airplane land, of course, you got to remember we can always trim. In helicopter land, depending on how your configuration is set up for Microsoft Flight Simulator, it can be very challenging to trim. There we go. I'll go ahead and level everything off. Yeah, we're cruising pretty smoothly here. Uh, controls are uh, pretty good. We're back up to 2,500 feet. I'm going to hang off on my descent until the last possible second here. Uh, we could, of course, get ourselves like a 75 foot per minute descent rate on this particular helicopter. The downside of something like that is, of course, um, you know, we're going to be having to keep track of that and be chasing after it. And there's always turbulence whenever you're flying in clouds. So we always want to kind of keep an eye on that. All right, I'm bring the nose up just a little bit there. Perfect. And again, it's very, very, very challenging to do this without a better lateral instrument. But we'll have the lateral instrument uh, when we come on to final here. Now, one of the things I mentioned at the beginning of the video is the fact that most of these helicopter approaches are done coupled. Uh, that is to say that the automatic pilot would be doing a lot of heavy lifting here, or you would have a flight director kind of assisting in this process. Unfortunately, this model helicopter does not have any of that. So as I mentioned, uh, we're having to do this uh, pretty raw, as I guess I would say. And again, I haven't touched my collective in a while. I'm just watching the uh, miles uh, sort of tick by. We got, remember, we have to hit at 2,500 feet, and then we're going to start our descent down to 2,200 feet at the Lomas intersection there. So again, just, just relax. Let the helicopter kind of do its thing. It's going to get bounced around. Uh, there's nothing you can do that. Just concentrate on just keeping your altitude. Keep your scan going. Try to limit the amount of things that you change. You know, if I go and press the collective pedal, that's going to throw off my pitch a little bit. If I touch the collect the... Um, I'm sorry, this is the, uh, yeah, it's like torque pedal, not the collective. If I touch the collective, that's, of course, going to cause my speed and my lift to change, which is going to cause me to hit the cyclic, which is going to cause me to hit the anti-torque pedals. It's really, really critical at all those components that we're able to hit them when we need them to hit them. Speaking of hitting them, and we're just about there. Now, that was an interesting experience. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to get set up for our next component here. Now, the great thing is just because we're a helicopter doesn't mean their speeds of our helicopter are really that much different. And I just blew the approach. That's okay, though. So uh, one of the things is, is our speeds are not going to be uh, this, that much different than that of a conventional aircraft. So you'll notice uh, when I'm coming in my approach here is um, just because we need 500 feet per minute would mean we're doing about 100 knots. Since we're doing about, eh, I'll call it about uh, 85, 90 now, that's going to give us about 500 feet per minute is going to be our descent rate as we come down to our next waypoint here. So we're going to start making our way down. Uh, Lomas is going to be our next spot here. Uh, my little attitude instrument is actually valuable once again. And the other thing you're probably going to notice is uh, we go moving down. Let's go lift that nose up. We only need about 500 feet per minute or so. As you're probably going to see, uh, let's see if I can zoom in here, that our mode goes to LNAV plus V, which now means we have vertical navigation information available at our disposal on our little flight instrument display. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our way down to the lowest waypoint. Now, again, you're going to have a lot of challenge with this on account of the fact that there are so many things happening, as you know, force-wise in a helicopter at a time. And you're also going to be fighting the turbulence, which is uh, getting really real here. So we're going to be cruising our way down towards Lomas. Like I said, ideally, you'd be coming at about 500 feet per minute here, but I'm absolutely fighting the turbulence right now. That looks pretty good, about 500 feet per minute. And we'll come to the left just a tiny bit. 
There we go. It looks pretty good. And there's our 2,200 feet. Now, if you recall, we're not supposed to go below 2,200 feet until we cross Lomas. So I'm actually going to lift the nose up just the teeny tiny bit, and we're just going to sort of chill here until we cross that particular waypoint. Now, one of the things that we don't have, as you probably observed, is we do not have our little navigational bars on the left and right side of our little HSI. Uh, this makes things very, very challenging. And no matter how many times you can bash that button, you're going to notice that we're not going to get that information right away. There we go. Now you can see very clearly that we're slightly off to the right. Let's bring the nose down. We blew the approach a second time. Uh, you can see that we went over well over 100 feet, but I'm also trying to reach and grab switches as I'm trying to explain things at the same time. So just like flying a regular approach, uh, we're just going to kind of hang on. Just uh, look out for our individual parts here. So Lomas is about 2 minutes and 25 seconds away. Actually, we didn't blow the approach. We were at or above. We're good. And we're just going to slowly make our way down to that particular point. Now, the huge advantage we have here is if we are a little bit quick or we're a little bit late, that's okay because we don't have to deal with things like stalling or getting our flaps down. And for many, many helicopters, you're also not going to be deploying your landing gear, so you don't have to worry about that too much. There we go, 2,200 feet. I'm going to go ahead and reduce pressure. Again, uh, this is a quite a process. Uh, it's exactly what I mean the first time you try this yourself. All right, let's see, 2,200 feet. We're just going to chill here. We're a little off to the right of our particular LDA, or glide path, I should say. We're not in the LDA today. And we're just going to chill here. And as long as we don't dip under that particular altitude that we're assigned, we're actually perfectly fine where we are here. I don't have to do anything special. There's no risk of running into a mountain or anything like that. We can just continue our approach, which I said, not too bad if you ask me. Now, if you're flying this in the Capri, uh, you're going to have a little bit of trouble with it because uh, you're missing a lot of our critical instrumentation that we need here. All right, that looks good. I don't want to get less than more than 75 feet, though, so I'm going to let the nose come up just a tiny bit. And that's fine. I'm just going to bring the nose back down to where it is. I'm resisting the urge to touch the collective, because if I touch the collective, you're going to be throwing all the other forces involved out of wild alignment here. Let's see, i got about 58 seconds until it gets my waypoint. Nice and relaxed here. Don't try to go nuts. You're going to be fighting turbulence all the way down, especially in a helicopter. You really, really start to appreciate the stability of an airplane uh, when you make these approaches. There we go. Get ourselves nice and lined up once again. Yeah, it's looking pretty good now. I'm just going to enjoy this gentle ride off to the left. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and swing ourselves back into alignment here. Yeah, we're just about to cross Lomas in uh, just a few minutes. Uh, just a few moments, I should say, not minutes. There we are. Let's hold that 2,200 feet. Right, about 12 seconds, and then our next altitude is going to be Dan's, which is 680. And get ready. And we're on our way. So now we're going to go down to Dan's, and we're going to increase our descent rate here. Again, we want to use about half of our airspeed. So uh, look, right now we're doing about 100. That's going to be about 500 feet per minute. We'll get us about a three degree descent. And that's a rule of thumb. It's going to be modified by things like, you know, the um, wind speed and stuff like that on our approach. Now, as we're making our way down, you're going to notice all of your instrumentation is going to get progressively more touchy. Uh, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. All right, there goes my HSI. You can see we're starting to close pretty darn close onto the actual path that we're trying to follow. We're holding that 500 feet per minute. And remember, our new altitude we're riding down to is about 680 feet. Uh, we don't have an altitude alerter or anything like that, so uh, we're kind of on our own to continually fly the helicopter while checking and monitoring from time to time to make sure everything else is okay. Now, one of the things it did not do still is I've not touched my collective. I've accepted the increase in airspeed because it's going to allow me to do the math a little bit easier. All right, I'm going to swing to the right. It's looking pretty good. We can see I've got everything pretty well established here. I'll bring the nose up just a tiny bit more. And I think that's going to start drifting. I can see the twist in the river. That's a great sign for us. And we're just going to keep on sailing. And at this point, uh, we're getting ready for Dan's. Uh, Dan's, like I said, 680 feet. But we're going to go all the way down to 460 on this one and see what we can find. Whew, this is work. <laughs> Not going to lie, this is uh, probably one of the more pro difficult approaches I think I've done. Now, I notice off in the distance, I see those little flishy, flashy lights. Uh, that's the end of the runway. Uh, lucky us, we found the end of the runway. So uh, that's awesome. In the real world, of course, some people like to immediately abort their instrument approach here and uh, fly the thing down to the ground. That's wonderful. But uh, keep in mind that there could be clouds between us and the end of the runway. And uh, we're terrible judges of things like distance at nighttime. So always kind of keep that in the back of your mind. The other thing people start doing is they stop flying the instrument approach and start flying the visual approach, and uh, they end up flying into something they don't want to. So in this case, I'm going to come to the bottom. Uh, we're about 320 over minimums there. 
getting close to Dan's. Like I said, we're about 17 seconds to go to Dan's, and you can see I did a much better job after Dan's of getting that vertical path correct. About 10 seconds to Dan's. Nice and easy. Gonna be a little high on Dan's, but that's okay. Over a helicopter, we can slow down anytime. It's pretty good. Hold that nose up. There's the minimums. And we cross Dan's at almost exactly the correct time. So now we're going to proceed all the way down to our minimum altitude, which is going to be a 460 feet. And we're just going to be looking for the runway. That runway's got to be out there somewhere. I'm telling you, there's a runway. See the runway? I feel like Blue's Clues. <laughs> and we can see uh, right off the nose, of course, there's our level of fleshy flashers uh, letting us know. And there is our minimum. So we're going to go level the helicopter off. All I'm going to do is release pressure on the cyclic just a little bit. And we basically just chill here until we see the runway or we hit our missed approach point, which eh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Of course, the hard part for us now is we're a helicopter doing 100 knots, and we have to lose a lot of altitude to be able to safely actually land the sucker. So uh, now we have to actually transition to our visual approach, which uh, for anybody who knows anything about helicopters, you would know this is not how you do a visual approach on a helicopter. Uh, this would be much too fast. There we go. We're just going to swing down the runway, and we're going to pretend we're a Cessna 172 here. And we're going to be nice and careful with that. Now, some people are like, why don't you just do a quick stop? Oh, we could do a quick stop, and that's also a good way to chop your tail off. I'm perfectly fine being a little old school here. And we're down. <laughs> Enjoy.